Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome back to Edenia. Here we are. I've got some tea. I'm ready. I need to deposit the bag somewhere. There we go. Plop, plop. Alrighty. So, tonight, we are not going to play a game. We're going to design one. We're going to do a little bit of... Um, a little bit of dungeon designing, and we're going to do it on live stream because normally, normally I do this all by myself. But I am just wondering what would happen if we had a bunch of nerds together, and we just all chipped in. So let me get this music just right. The volume, I think that's fine. Yeah, it's just fine. Just in the background. There we go. Ah, all right. So, is everyone ready? We're going to go to left monitor. Plop, there we go. Normally I don't do left monitor because, well, you can see all my stuffs like this. It's my it's my desktop. Um, but today we're going to do a little bit of something behind the screens. Let's open up my world map. I'm going to tell you all about these programs in just a minute while we walk through. Let me just load some things in. And there we go. This is very 1990, this. All right, cool. Zoom out just a bit. There we go. Nice. Oh, the world map. Great. Great. So, um, I was... Um, uh, as some of you might know, I run a bit of a game. I run a, I run a Dungeons & Dragons game. And I have to do a lot of designing for that because I am the Dungeon Master. Now, if you... Uh, if you know Dungeons and Dragons, you know you have to take care of a lot of things, a lot of options in that game, and a lot of people will uh, will tell you differently on how to run D and I'm here to tell you to just run it, and you'll be fine. There we go. Let's start with a dungeon, because if you start with a dungeon, uh, chances are that um, your players are not going to go through the first level on the first night. They're going to have some uh they're gonna have to spend some time inside a dungeon so you can uh you can have a session of uh two or three hours with them just entering the dungeon and clearing a couple of rooms and that will give you a lot of uh, a lot of room later on a lot of uh a lot of really nice really nice room uh to expand upon your dungeon let's go to dungeon yeah dungeons there we go dungeon floor Sure, we've got a couple of tiles. Let's first make the proper background, which is uh, because I use Tabletop Simulator, we always play on an 88 by 52 grid map. So this has to be the minimum. There we go. Now we can zoom in just a bit. Like this. Alrighty. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a dungeon entrance. Who are you playing with? At the moment, I am. Uh, at the moment, I'm not playing with people. At the moment, I'm. Uh, I'm just designing. But normally, I play with a group of twelve people. Uh, twelve people, uh, for which I have an online community. Uh, as for now, it's a it's a closed group. Just uh, just people that I know. But we might do an uh, an on-stream game sometime soon. I was thinking of doing an on-stream one-shot with a couple of a uh, couple of viewers, um, because you know I I don't see why not. Should be super super fun. All right, so let's have this dungeon have the entrance somewhere in the in a corner in the south. We'll have an entrance right about here. We'll uh, we'll just drag tiles from now on. So this will be an entrance, and there will be a room. Now, dungeons consist of rooms. This should be no surprise to any of you who's ever played any video game. Uh, so we'll have a nice 12 by 12 room to open up in. So I make dungeons uh, with a couple of principles in mind. Uh, first principle is people need a reason to go to your dungeon. Otherwise, there's no point in having a dungeon. So we need to come up with some things to do within this dungeon and I'm gonna come up with those on the fly we're gonna just create some rooms and we'll see connections in the rooms that we've made and we'll see oh this is uh, this could be something fun so let's just make one room 
uh, we'll have a small room here, a very uh, six by six room, which is not very uh, very big. Uh, any one tile can fit a single character, so that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. So this is going to be crowded very fast. Now this room serves just as something to break up the corridor and possibly a place for the for the players to rest um, or for the inhabitants to rest uh, to rest that might also be a very nice twist for them to find a couple of sleeping bags and a couple of bad guys sleeping here while they try and pass do they do it quietly or do they smoke out the room or will they kill them in their sleep that's uh, that's for the players to decide all right so let's continue this hallway and i would like this hallway to be just as long as this hallway to have a little bit of symmetry and we'll just have an yeah, we'll have a, an L-shaped room here. So something like this. And this room will have a little uh, a little cul-de-sac. I don't know if that's the right right wording for it. Well, it will have a little uh, a little cul-de-sac right here. And this will house a secret secret tunnel. And this secret tunnel is something we're not going to put on the map because this is what the players can see. But we might have um, Let's see, is there any way to to do DM only in this uh, in this Dungeon Painter Studio? No, I don't think so. All right, we'll, um, we'll not put it on the map because that will be, um, that will be too obvious for people. But there will be a secret, uh, a, a secret corridor. Uh, we're just going to paint it like this. A secret small corridor which will lead upwards to... Um, to a higher ground and people can drop from the ceiling here so just so they get back to the start so we're gonna we're gonna leave those uh, leave those out we're not gonna put those in we're just gonna have a secret room here and um, the players will not know about this always have secrets secrets are fun even if they don't really contain all the treasure in the world it's fun to have a little secret room all right another corridor then and uh, we'll have we'll have a big room oh there we go. We'll have a big room uh, here. So this will be uh, the main dungeon hall. Quite quite a big room, and we'll have uh, a couple of a couple of alcoves here. Now these alcoves, uh, I'm just drawing these because I like to draw these, and these don't mean anything just yet. This is just dungeon dressing, uh, as far as the players are concerned. But one of these is going to have a doorway a doorway that will lead to the next room now this next room i'm just going to put it mm, where am i going to put it i'm going to put it right here now the players don't see this the players will only see what i reveal to them so there will be another room here and this room uh, will have a little little wide corridor and it will have a smaller room somewhere here now it would also be fun if they could uh, if they could find a secret door that leads to here that would be nice all right so what if we have uh, a pathway this is something i'm going to draw on the map afterwards because if people get to see this map they also get to see the secrets and that's not what we want we want the people to be uh, to find out the secrets themselves so this has a this room should probably have a riddle as to which door they should take in order to get to the next room and perhaps it should be a, a dimension door or uh, one that teleports you to the other side something like a portal so here could be a, a portal uh, a, a portal corridor it's not something we draw on the map but that will be fine and from this from this room there should be um probably another exit so somewhere outside of the dungeon where if they poke their head out they will find out that this is also an exit that they haven't seen before so oh come on please there we go nice so what's this then this can go yeah yeah great cool all right secret and uh, secret secret exit that's something we uh, we would really like to see. All right, so we have a couple of rooms, and uh, already by just drawing these rooms, we came up with a couple of ideas. And this is where the magic starts to come in. If you if you have been DMing for a, for a long time, or even if you're just getting started, I think even more so when you're just getting started, 
you will find things just by drawing stuff. You will find things like, oh, that's that's nice. That can have a secret door. This should have a riddle. Uh, this should be a guardian room. I mean, let's uh, let's go through the process, shall we? Let's um, let's go to here. We'll zoom in a bit. We'll make the rooms look nice. We'll have some uh, some walls and stuff. Now, this program I'm using, Dungeon Painter Studio, which was gifted to me by one of my patrons, which is Dragon Lulz. And Dragon Lulz uh, is one of my subscribers on this channel. Thank you so much for that. Uh, objects? Is it objects? Yes, walls. There we go. Doors, walls, and patches. All right. So, it would be kind of nice if we had uh, some... Inner corners, yep, all right. So we'll have some inner corners. We'll make we'll make the map look nice because we care about visuals just a bit. And the reason we put a lot of detail in these maps is because, well, is this uh, this is a small outer corner. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. So if we put this to zero, that's a bit too steep. I need a bit. Of, uh, yeah, that that will do. That will do nicely. Um, and to put one, let's see, not here, there we'll, yeah, and here, and here as well, and here, and here as well. We'll make it look nice. Nice walls, whatever. Um, that's it for the corners on this bit. We'll need some straights, uh, straights and ledges. No, that's stairs and ledges. This is straights. There we go. So straight corridors, we'll have, uh, the nice big corridors like this and this and this and then we just need one to fill up the gap there we go let's rotate this 90 degrees we'll have a nice bit of straight four by four straight one there we go and here as well we'll need to fill it up with a two by two Alrighty, flip it around and we should put some here as well yep flip it around even more there we go Nice. Bit of dungeon dressing. Now, if this is too... I don't know if it's zoomed in enough. Let's zoom in a bit more so you can, you guys can see better, right? I think it's very important for you to see everything that's going on. All right. Um, 90 degrees to flip it this way. We'll need some corridors here as well. All right. Looking nice. We, we've got some walls. And this room should have perhaps some dressing. Now, I don't think dressing is in the uh, dead ends and pillars. Oh, we could have some pillars. That would be nice. Yeah, we'll just have a... Uh, because, of course, structural integrity. So what if we just have uh, a pillar right here? And, uh, well, perhaps... Perhaps here as well. Yeah, that would be nice. And here... And here, we'll just have a couple of pillars and an exit. Very nice, very easy to do. Just have some pillars. These pillars will also provide, of course, some cover to the players. So if they uh, if they get into a tight scrape uh, in this area, they will have some cover. The ranged people will have cover, but also the monsters that we're going to put in here, they will also have a bit of cover. There's also these one-by-one one, uh, pillars, which are round. I don't really like these. Nah, these are nah, not really my style. I like the square ones. All right, moving on. So, um, this room that we just made is the entrance to the dungeon. Now, of course, if you have a dungeon, um, there has to be a reason. There has to be a reason that no one ever looted this dungeon. So, this dungeon entrance should have a couple of guardians. And it doesn't have to be something impressive. It doesn't have to be like a dragon or an iron golem. No, it just has to be something that keeps the common people out and perhaps even scare off a couple of adventurers. So I'm going to put this dungeon in a tier 2 area, which means the player would be a bit higher level. So I'm thinking of using Slard. Slard are these interdimensional toad demons, and uh, as Matt Colville always says, they are color-coded, so you uh, um, so you get to collect them all. Let's put D&D Beyond, there we go. Monsters. Alright, that's very white. Uh, <laughs> there we go, Slard. <coughs> 
All right, we have a couple of slard. Now, I think that these higher level slards, these blue slard, green slard, gray slard, and death slard, these are very, very powerful. You don't want these. Uh, let's have just a couple of red slard. These are intense enough. So these are uh, like, uh, yeah, like this. Very nasty creatures. Long claws, they've got a lot of hit points. But they don't have they don't have a lot of armor, so they're not too bad to uh, to to take away, to take out. They have magic resistance and regeneration, so they have to be killed quick, and they have a bit of a multi attack. They also have something really nasty, which is they can lay a tadpole in you, and if you don't if you don't notice the tadpole being there for three months, I guess it says somewhere, uh, three months. They will kill the host. <laughs> and uh, fourth erupts a tadpole, which is one of these creatures. Very tiny, tiny aberration. Uh, it's not really uh, all that fast or strong, but, um, uh, but if it bursts out of your body, you are dead. And the rest will have to deal with this tadpole. Now, one tadpole is not too bad, but if it's like, uh, if it's like three people in your party have been affected, then it's a, it's a different story. They can really mess up your uh, otherwise stroll through the park. All right, so we're going to put Slard in here. Um, there we go. Back to you. So Slard, slimy creatures. Um, yeah, we're just going to have... Uh, this is something we're going to add later. We're just going to make the blueprint now. All right, so some walls. Walls would be nice. Um, inner corners, yes. All right, so let's put some corners in. All righty. And you, and you as well. A couple of corners. Now we need some inner corners, uh, outer corners as well. A couple of these. One of these, and uh, I guess it's this one. Yep. All right, now... We're going to put some corners here as well because we're going to need those in a second. Um, straights. There's also wall straights. Oh, this is a wall into. Uh, all right. Yeah. So these go uh, in a room. That's uh, that's interesting. Wall corners. Yeah. All right. Cool. So these go outside. That's better. One of these. One of these. Uh, one of these and one of those. There we go, uh, four by four straight. Let's turn it around. Oh, that's that's wrong. Turn it around. Put some straights up here. Um, oh, these can even overlap. That's interesting. So you can just use these overlappingly. We're not going to do it. We're just going to make it look nice. Uh, outer corners. No, inner corner. But this corner should be... 270, no, 90 degrees, there we go, plop, straight, wonder if you can make this a bit bigger, no, we can't, all right, uh -huh. 180, there we go, all right, so this little chamber here, this is going to be, uh, this is probably going to be um, well. I don't know how do uh, how do slard sleep? They probably sleep in really gross uh, egg sacs or something. Let's see. Mm. It doesn't really say here. Uh, oh, these are shape shifters, shape changes. Now this one in particular isn't, but. Uh, some Slardy uh, can transform into humanoid creatures from which they originally spawned. Hmm. Alright, interesting. So they take over someone, they take over someone's body, and then they blow it up. And then they become that person on, de uh, person on demand. That's interesting. So what if... So what if these Slard just... Um, what if they are just in human form and they lie here in wait uh, to ambush unwary adventurers? I think that's brilliant. I, I love these creatures already. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so we're going to use some uh, some slot then. And, oh, let's zoom in. 
Alright, so this is going to be somewhere they can sleep. And uh, there we go, let's plop down a couple of these. 90 degrees up here and up here, that's fine. We'll uh, probably want some of these as well. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, it's probably a bit too big. Let's have this. Yeah, all right, and this as well. All right, uh, some corners then, outer corners. 270, yep, all righty. Uh, and here as well, 180. Uh, let's see, you and you. All right, let's, uh, we're going to make it look nice. Inner corners, there we go. All right, a couple of these. Now, this should just be another sleeping place uh, where the slard uh, sleep and uh, where they are generally being mischievous or whatever they are. Probably not just mischievous, they're probably really horrible. <laughs> probably the worst. There we go. Nice walls. All right, so uh, we decided that there should be a, uh, a secret entrance here that leads to a... Uh, a climbable, a climbable crawl space that will uh, go back to the uh, to the first. Oh, I never knew you could just right click and, and drag. That's amazing. That will save me a lot of time. Um, <laughs> nice. All right. So, objects back to here. Um, we're going to use some of these. There we go. <laughs> All right, this will be this will be a little bit of work, and with a little bit, I mean a lot. Uh, yeah, this just going to be inner corner, outer corner, so that's not very interesting to do right now. Um, put you there, and probably oh, 180, probably something like this. Yeah. All right, we're gonna make we're gonna make it look nice. Uh, outer corners. We're gonna have a lot of these, so every single piece that I can think of that has one of these, then uh, these ones go here, 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 here. Oh, rip skit. Aww. Yo, Frost King. Hello, King. Uh, yeah, rip skit. Rip in pieces. My god. So, um, last night we played D&D, &D, as we do, and uh, there was this guy, uh, and he had a goblin... Uh, a goblin character, so by definition a bit evil. Uh, but we really didn't think anything of it. We thought, oh, he's just going to play along and it's going to be fine. Uh, but it wasn't. It wasn't fine. And uh, <laughs> uh, he uh, pledged loyalty to a witch because he had a curse and the curse made him look blue. And, uh, well, blue was not his favorite color, it seems, because he really wanted to be not blue. Um, and... So he uh, he pledged uh, he pledged to deal with this witch. Uh, he pledged to her loyalty in order to regain his color and have his curse removed. Now the witch didn't know how to remove curses because the witch was not a cleric. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, she died. Uh, sorry, he he died. He uh, it was a he, I believe. Uh, he died very quickly. Um, when he attacks us uh, in order to prove his loyalty to the witch and then we decided it was enough and we killed him. <laughs> we killed one of our own party members because he was not to be trusted which was part of his roleplay and he was actually an evil character so somewhat justified. He's making a new one right now. We don't really uh, we don't really punish you all that much when you die so We just said, oh, I'll make a new character. Half hit, uh, half experience points. It will be fine. That's how the Edenian people roll. Yeah. We uh, we roll by killing each other. Yep. <laughs> we are the worst. Um, all right. So let's uh, put in some of these corners. All right. So um, Neo Motion, thanks for joining. Don't... Uh, 
Don't peek too much because uh, this is all going to be one of the upcoming dungeons. Uh, by then you probably, hopefully, will have forgotten everything that transpired here. Or else I'm just going to have to cast Modify Memory on you. If that's okay. Uh, <laughs> modify Memory with Consent. That's, uh, that's going to be a new spell. Alright, there we go. No problem, he says. Alright. That's what I really like about my about my group. We have we rarely have uh, any uh, meta gamers, so that's really nice. They don't really look up the monsters and whatnot. Um, slard, yes, the slard. Ah, uh, oh, I love the slard. Great creatures. I think they have a lot of potential as uh, as bad guys. Great, and now just put these little bits of wall in. Yep, there we go. Now, up a bit. We're going to make it look a bit nice. Uh, but we're not going to pour too much detail in it because we still have some work to do within Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is the platform I use for my role-playing nights. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you should do Roll20 or you should do Fancy Grounds. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I really like... The physics engine of Tabletop Simulator. I really like the fact that we can uh, uh, that we can just load up the game, load up a table, and actually roll dice and move our characters around. It's, it's just a bit more authentic, I, I imagine. And some of you might disagree, and that's fine. That's why we're on the internet. And on the internet, everyone has the right to disagree. All right, so this is looking uh, this is looking a bit better. We'll have some pillars uh, every now and again. We don't want to litter the place with pillars, but we'll have some pillars, one right here and one right here. I think that's very nice. We'll have a pillar right in the middle of this room. I think that's nice, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have a pillar here and here for stru structural integrity. This is going to be the big room, and uh, this big room will have a couple of pillars. And this big room might also have uh, some walls, uh, some wall corners, leading uh, leading to... I don't know what they would lead to, but this is going to be interesting to see. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, a room within the room. And it's going to have a door. Mm. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, it's going to have a... Uh, that's too big already. Yeah, we need another corner then. Uh, yeah, alright. Corners and straights. Yeah, this is going to be great. Alright, we'll have a room within the room and we'll have a door. Uh, also a door. Um, let's see. Wall corners. That's what we need. These ones. All right, here and here, we need a little bit of straight still, a one by one straight. There we go. All right, room within the room. And I know it's not entirely in the middle. That's absolutely fine. Um, we'll grab one of these two by twos. We'll delete this and we'll put in a door. So a two by two door. Uh... Oh, wait, we need to select objects again, and then, oh yeah, like this. Uh, let's put it on zero degrees. Uh, ooh, this is not fit. For some reason, this does not fit. Hmm. I don't know why. It should fit. Can we offset this? Uh, let's see. Random angle. Oh, you can have random angles. That's really nice. Uh, custom angle? No. Can we, uh, if we click it down and we press select, can we then move it? No, it's going to snap to the grid. All right. So what if we, um, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll do it differently. We'll not have a room here. We'll just make the room in tabletop simulator. I think that's fine. All right. So basic structure of the dungeon is done 
yeah, that will do it. All right, so we have a basic structure. Let's uh, save this, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have to take a look at the map. Uh, this is gonna be. Mm, this is going to be a new feature. We're going to explain all about this app later. We're going to make some nice maps. Features, favorites. It's going to be a monster den. And it's going to be a slard dungeon. All right, monster den. We'll just plunk it down somewhere on the map. I think this will be a nice place. Right in the middle of the swamp, near some other stuff. So people will have some places to go, and uh, if they do not come across this, they will come across something else. Nice enough. All right, let's uh, save this, by the way. Save in progress. All right. Um, now, we did want to see the... What's this? Uh, zero five seven zero one two zero five seven. I'm just gonna type it in chat. Zero two one. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget while typing this. So this is gonna be continent zero five seven dot zero two one slard dungeon. Save it. Now export it to not PDF. No thanks. We'll export it to PNG. We will not need the coordinates. Thank you. We do want the... Do we want the grid? Yeah, grid is nice. Um, create PNG. And it's done. So this will be um, slot dungeon, not dot dps, but dot png. There we go, and it's saved. Let's minimize this. Let's take a look at my beautiful background, and we'll open up tabletop simulator. There we go. <clears throat> Plat. Probably asking a lot of my computer because I'm, I'm I have like th three things open at the same time and they are all they're all a bit render. Uh, that looks like GW. Yeah, it is Guild Wars actually. My uh, my backgrounds are all Guild Wars screenshots. So uh, <laughs> so there you go. All right, let's uh, create a table single player. <coughs> I'm going to save and load, and I'm just going to load uh, Edenia Legends blank. So this is one of my blank tables. And as you can see, the table is absolutely blank. There's nothing here. Nothing at all. Just this. A raster. Just a grid. We'll go to saved. We'll load in a table. Now this is very, uh, very important. We'll load in a table. Custom. And now the top image and the bottom image should be different from one another. Yeah, this is this is a grass map I made a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. All right, let's uh, flip it over and custom and go to browse local files, tabletop sim. Mm -hmm. Tables and we'll have the slot dungeon. Load it into the cloud. Import. Let's 
taking its time. Yeah, there we are. All right, lock it in. Lock it in place. So this will come when we load up the game. This will be visible. Now, we need to have some stuff in it. First off, we're going to need some slard. So let's uh, search my collection of minis. Slard. Oh, look, we have them all. Red, green, grey, death, and blue. Now, I think red slard. Very nice to have. Let's take a look at D&D Beyond. So the red slard are the easiest. The blue slard, they uh, can regenerate and they can claw. Let's see. If the target is a humanoid, it must uh, succeed on a constitution saving throw or be infected with a disease called Chaos Phage. While infected, target can't regain hit points. Hit points maximum is reduced by 10 every 24 hours. If the disease reduces the target hit points to zero, the target instantly transforms into a red slard. Or if it has the ability to cast third uh, level or higher, a green slard. Only a wish spell can reverse the transformation. A wish spell is one of those things that you get on level 20. So <laughs> this is a, a max level uh, max level spell. So Let's see. Uh, green slard. So these are the spell casters. Yeah. They can cast invisibility. Or fear. And they can cast one per day fireball. Now that's a really nasty spell, fireball. Also has the regeneration. Uh, can claw. Uh, it has a staff, which it can, uh, can attack. And it can hurl flames. So that's a... Uh, that's very nice. That's not even a. That's not even a cantrip. That's just a ranged spell attack, um, which is not a cantrip for some reason, because probably the damage is different than what a regular fireball does or firebolt. I have to say. So green slards very nasty. These are the spell casters. The blue slard, they are also very nasty, but um, just a little less na nasty than the blue slard. All right, so. Uh, this is going to be high-end uh, tier 2 uh, content, so the players will be level uh, level 5 to 8, and they will probably have a party of 4. I'm always uh, expecting a party of 4, so... Ah, some tea, there we go. <clears throat> so the green slards are the spellcasters, these are very nasty. Have a bit, uh, bit more natural armor even, so that's very nice. And these do not have the shape... Oh, this has Shape Changer, yeah. It can polymorph into a small or medium humanoid. Or back into its true form. <coughs> <coughs> its stats are the same. And it reverts to its true form if it dies. Alright. Very nice. Very nice enemies to throw at some people. The Grey Slard. These are also shapeshifters. They can plane shift. That's insane. Plane shifting. Shape changer as well. Uh, can multi attack with two claws, uh, claws or a great sword. Interesting. But these are very tough. Uh, it can cast two fireballs a day. It can cast one plane shift on itself. So it can go interdimensional and be gone. Yeah, this is interesting, but it's going to be very tough. This is going to be very tough. This is more likely tier 3. Uh, we can test that, by the way, how deadly it is. Uh, let's put the calculator in front. All right, so we have four characters. Max level uh, calculate. All right. So if we have now, um, for instance, we have uh, one gray slud, uh, which is rating 9. We'll add a row and we'll also have one red slard, uh, which is encounter uh, encounter rating or uh, challenge rating 5. Alright, so one of 9 and one of 5. Let's calculate. This is deadly. Alright, so this is very deadly. Um, they do get nice experience. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this is deadly. Very deadly encounter. 
So probably we should not use the spell casting slot. We will just seed that there are slot in the world and they can uh, they can find some slots some other time. So if we have two uh, two red slot, um, yeah, uh, that will do. Two red slot, that will be around medium encounter. So if we uh, remove a row, we'll have two. Uh, perhaps we will have uh, three. Three is deadly. All right. Now the world can be a bit deadly. Of course, the world can be deadly, but uh, two of these red slants, that's going to be... That's going to be okay. That's going to be... Uh, they're going to be able to handle that. Now, do keep in mind that um, in Dungeons and Dragons, it's... Um, it is... How do you call it? It's, uh, it's preferred to have six encounters a day. Six. So that's a lot of encounters. Um, if you have six medium encounters, they're going to be fine. They're going to be just fine, and they will have healed up, and they will have taken a short rest, and then at the end of the day, you'll take a long rest, and everything's fine. Now, if you have a couple of deadly encounters in there, that's going to be okay. Uh, because players can always surprise you, and if they, cannot, if they uh, seriously cannot handle an encounter, they could run. Most are level 5 now. 8 will take a while. I absolutely, I know, I know. But I am using these calculation methods um, to... Um, so what I'm doing is I always say 4 characters level 8. But usually it's 5. Sometimes it's 6. Sometimes it's a full party. That will uh, absolutely increase your odds against the enemies and also do remember that um, if we have uh, for instance a cobalt right cobalt oh that's uh, that's wrong cobalt so one cobalt is challenge rating one eighth so that's uh, one slash eight now if you calculate this this is a trivial encounter just to have two uh, two monsters if we have four it's going to be trivial as well. So what if we have 20? They say 20 kobolds is going to be easy. But kobolds, they do 20 attacks if they have, uh, if you have 20 kobolds. And they also have back tactics, so they always get uh, advantage when they are nearby other creatures. And each of them will hit you for <clears throat> right around, uh, what is it, uh, right around uh, 5 damage or something. They will hit you with their slings for 5 damage. Now that's not a lot. But if you get hit 20 times for 5 damage, most of your characters are dead. So, this encounter difficulty is based on, uh, based on the experience you should get for, for the encounter. Um, so this is a horde. <laughs> a horde of monsters. So if you calculate 40, it's still going to say medium. If we, if we say 100, now it says deadly. All right, so 80. 80 is hard. But if you fight against 80 kobolds, you're going to be absolutely murdered. You're going to be dead. So what you do want to know is that if you have two slads, oh, there we go, two slad, it's going to be a medium encounter. But also, uh, the encounter is going to be easier because you have more characters than monsters. And if you have more characters than monsters, that means you will do more attacks. You will hit more on average. And that's something that most encounter tables do not um, do not take into account. So if there's just two monsters, I'm pretty sure that a level 5 to 8 party will not have problems with this. So if you just say level 6 average, calculate. Now it's going to be a hard encounter. But if you're level 5, then it's going to be a deadly encounter. Now, the difference between a level 5 character and a level 8 character is not that much. Uh, on level 8, you do get your uh, your uh, um, score increase. Your, uh, what's it called? Ability score increase. So, you'll be a bit stronger. But you don't really get... Uh, you don't really get a lot of game-changing uh, game changing items in between. Fourth level spell slots. Now that that is something that you do get in between, and that's uh, that's really nice uh, to have because that will have the, the greater uh, area of effect spells and whatnot. So that's uh, that's all very interesting. 
Um, but I think as long as you have less monsters than you have players, most encounters will be okay. And uh, I've not used this calculator before uh, before today. I just found it out today. And it's really handy because otherwise you'd, you would have to do the exact same with the rules in the book. And it would be uh, it's quite a drag. But um, I think uh, all the encounters I've made so far uh, have been purely based on whatever I like. And I've thrown some crazy stuff at my players and they always survived. So I think that the players should never be underestimated and they will always find a way to make the encounter easier for themselves. For instance, if there's a cliff, it's just a, just a hazard. Uh, one red dragon. Yeah, I still believe that you can take on one red dragon with a level 4 to 8 uh, party. Just uh, the four, five, level 4 and 5. Just have 6 people. You'll be easily slaying that dragon. Uh, it might have some casualties. Some people might die. But I still think you can defeat a dragon. We'll see. We'll see, right? And a good plan. Yeah, a good plan like uh, trapping the dragon in uh, in the tunnel and making sure it's uh, uh, it's um, what's it called? It's uh, captured. That will help. All right. So uh, using this knowledge, we're gonna just put in some slard. Now you can also, if you're really clever about it, you can also not fight every slard there is at the same time. That would really help if you did that. So let's, uh, let's go to here, let's, uh, we have the red slard. All right. Now red slards are large creatures, so they take up uh, two spaces. That means I'm gonna have to adjust the grid. Uh, also, let's show the lines of the grid and let's make them a bit, let's make it thick as well, just so we can see easily. Um, in the game itself, we'll not do this, but for now, it's really nice to have. So, uh, all right. Let's put these. Uh, oh, this is nice and in the middle. That's great. And we'll uh, give this red slard some hit points and stuff. Now, I, I'm going to have to alt tab. I'm going to put this on my other screen for a second while not blocking Streamlabs. There we go. All right, the red slard. You have an armor class of 14 and you have hit points 93. Now this is something I always um, put on the miniatures because uh, the players will find out anyway so you might as well tell them. It just saves a lot of hassle, a lot of time. Red slard. There we go. Now, let's, uh, you know what, let's do all the slard for now. So, um, let's see, blue slard, death slard, gray slard, and the green slard. There we go. Now, these, these are big apparently. Red slard are large, so that's good. The blue slard, also large. I think these are just smaller versions. I think that's... Uh, I don't know if that's intended. We'll see. Blue slard. So you have a bit more armor class. You have a natural armor of 15. And you have a lot more HP as well. You have 123. Alright, let's save you as well. Blue slard. Alright, then the green slard. We'll uh, go... A bit down there we go green slard all right now you're a nasty uh, nasty little critter all right so armor class 16 hit points 127 and you do a lot of spells great stuff green slard you're also a large aberration so that is correct you are large and you should be two by two now the gray slard uh oh the gray slard is actually medium so they are smaller so that's correct all right The Grey Slard. Natural armor of 18. Hit points 127. Oh, that's a nasty creature. Yep. Alright, Grey Slard. Save. And let's also do the Death Slard. <coughs> 
So the Death Slard is the nastiest of all. 18 natural armor, hit points 170. Uh, it also is challenge rating 10. Now, challenge rating 10, really nasty. It has resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, and thunder, which is quite a, quite a lot of spells. Uh, it also has magic resistance, advantage on saving throws, magic weapons. Its claws are considered magical. And it regenerates... Uh, 10 hit points at the start of its turn, if it has at least one hit point. Cool, cool, cool. Save the death slot. All right, so we're not going to use this. We're not going to use this. So what we probably want, what we probably want, we want one of these green slots to be uh, a boss monster. So we'll have a green slot show up in this chamber, perhaps, uh, somewhere here. Sure. We'll have a green slard here, and we'll have some red slards and blue slards patrolling the halls. So, um, a red slard could be here. Could, uh, well, not here, because that's, uh, that's cramped, this space. It cannot use that space, because of the wall. Um, but it, there could be a red slard somewhere here, in this corridor, that's fine. We'll have, uh, uh perhaps... Two red slards here. There is also going to be a red slard in the dungeon entrance. Now, we said uh, we said that the dungeon entrance should also have um, should also have the reason that people cannot enter. So, what are we going to do? We're going to have the green slard. Um, we could have the green slot teleport up and down. I think green slots get teleport, right? Uh, let's see. Mage hand, fear, invisibility, fireball. No, no teleport. Please, not the slots. Oh, yes. Yes, the slots. Nick ring a ling. <laughs> All right. So we'll have a blue slot. You know what? We'll have a blue slot in this room instead. And we'll just have two red slots um, in the entrance. Because I think two red slards, uh, it is considered a deadly encounter. Uh, but they will have, they will surely have made sure that no one ever could, um, uh, no one has ever, uh, no one could ever enter this dungeon. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I think, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good to have, um, have the encounters happen in teams of two slot maximum we'll have two slots here and what we could do is we could have some sort of a facade uh, over here we could say for instance um, that these blue slots for example or the or we could have this green slot be a human after the dragon these will be easy yeah absolutely that's the that's the spirit that's the way <laughs> um, we could have the green slot be transformed into a into a humanoid, uh, and it would just um, uh, sit there waiting for help. If we work together, we will manage these easily. Yeah, absolutely. I think you will do just fine. Just uh, don't don't take any notes, because uh, we're gonna do some uh, some dungeon dressing now. Um. All right, so these blue slots, these are ob obviously defending uh, a, uh, obviously defending a dead end. So the players will notice that there's nothing else here, and we will uh, perhaps have a big pile of treasure right here. So the players will be like, "Yay, that's it!" Um, but of course, this this hole needs to have a riddle, a riddle in order to uh, to find and progress to the next room. Now that's easier said than done. So these two, yeah, these two are just the guardians. They will be here. They will, uh, they will put the pressure on the people if they uh, if they misbehave. And yeah, I think I think that this, you know what, this image, it's not very. Yeah, you know, let's go to uh, Dungeon Painter Studio. Let's go to Grid. This grid color should be black. 
I think, and uh, it should not be as transparent. I think, uh, yeah, this is this is not very transparent at all, so this is not good. But I think if we make this. This is also not very visible. Let's let's do gray. That is very visible, but also a bit jarring. I think uh, a white color should uh, be nicer. Yeah. Now that is a bit too much, I think. Yeah, I'm not going to put the riddle on stream. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna think of something. I will just think of something. So, dots, uh, dots could be nice. No, lines. We need lines. Alright, um, let's, uh, hello. <laughs> right, one second.
Hello. It's me. All right. Up. Tea bag in the other bag so it doesn't leak all throughout my my bin. There we go. Alrighty then. I've got my tea. I am done. All right. So uh, we need to find a proper color for this because. Um, the default color is very, um, very, um, jarring. So if we make this black, it's not visible at all, is it? No. Even when we put transparency on. We cannot make these lines any more bold, can we? No. No, that's not a good color. So what if we do, um, gray like this? Uh, it's not the best. A bit lighter. So if we do, if we do them very light, the grid is going to be visible. The grid is going to be very visible like this. We could also use the in-game tabletop simulator grid and just have no grid projected on it at all. That could also be a thing. You know what? We'll leave it. We'll leave it the way it is. We'll just use the tabletop simulator grid. If it's not very visible, which it isn't. Show lines. And there you go. This will be rather visible. Um, yeah, so every two tiles is one grid, which is a bit confusing. So if you make them thick lines, there we go. That's a lot better. Now everyone knows that this is a grid. And we can even have this be a little bit of an off color. We can say, all right, you know what? Uh, reset the grid. Uh, let's have this one by one, both. And then just thick, show lines. Yeah, if you if you do it like this, then they are transparent just a bit. I think that's better. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, that is something we can do. Great, good to know. All right. Um, <laughs> Lucas and Otis will be a lot of help to the party. Yeah, especially when they use the help action every time. All right, so secrets. We're going to use secrets and doors and whatnot, um, but not here, not on this stream. That's something uh, we are, we're going to do uh, afterwards because, well, as Neo Motion said, my players who are looking right now will uh, probably figure it out. Already some discussion going on in the WhatsApp group. Great. All right, so this is uh, basically the dungeon. Now we do need a couple of things. We um, we need to establish why people go here, because um, every place has to has to have its rumors. We need some some things to uh, convey to our uh, to our people. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to my d d folder, Tabletop Simulator, Tables, there we go, Slard Dungeon. Alright, let's save it as such. Uh, Nether, Edgeville, no, this is not Edgeville, we need to create a new save file because we haven't yet done anything here. Uh, create folder, we're going to need to create a folder. And this folder is going to be in Nether, and it's going to be called... Uh, Rotten Vale Swamps. That's the name I decided on. Rotten Vale Swamps. It should be here now. Oh, I've placed it in the root folder, never mind. Yeah, it's here. Alright, so move this. Move. Alright, let's delete then. Alright, it's not here either, it's strange. It cannot be moved nor deleted. All right. What the hell is going on? Uh, create folder and save and load. Let's create it in Nether. And it's going to be called Rotten Fail Swamps. Create. All right. Games. Save and load. Now we can delete this. Yep. 
nether Rottenvale swamps. And we're going to create in Rottenvale swamps Slard dungeon. There we go. Easy. Now, there needs to be a reason for people to visit. Because the people will have um, will have some understanding. They're not just explorers. They don't go anywhere to explore. Uh, some people do, by the way. Some people in the in the game just do it to explore. I'm looking at you, Kilsa. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, some other people might have some different needs. So these slard, they will have um, they will have some secret. What is that secret? What needs to be uncovered? So what I think is that uh, these slards have... I think these slards, uh, slards are still holding some, uh, some survivors, some people. Look at this guy. My god. It's great. I love these minis. Really nice. Alright, so this slard has some... Um, uh, has some people and because he is a green slot he can shape change as well so he might pretend to be that that people that person missing uh, so that's that's probably a good thing yeah I like that all right let's um let's get some props clutter um, all right so I always do the same bit of dungeon dressing and it might get a bit boring every now and again but first let's have a couple of barrels. Just so, just to liven the place up, just have a couple of barrels here, and barrels, everyone uses barrels, whether you're a monster or not, everyone needs to uh, dump stuff in a fashionable, fashionable way, uh, not just have litter lying everywhere, well, these are monsters, these are very monstrous monsters, um, you know what, they'll have some barrels, but uh, we might have some refuse uh, later on. All right, so um, <clears throat> do they do they make fires? These slard. That's a good question. Do they make fires? Is it dark in here or not? I believe that slard have dark vision. Let's see senses. Oh, they have blind sight. Thirty feet blind sight and sixty feet dark vision. That's nice. Um, and the red slard just have dark vision. All right, so they don't need lights. So it's going to be pitch black in here. Have a shapeshift to lure people into this dungeon in human form. That's, yeah, that's a great idea, actually. But uh, the problem is, this is very far away from town, and there's not going to be any people here. So these should have been uh, put here from uh, either before Ascension, so it has to be someone very old, like a dwarf or, a dwarf or an elf. Uh, perhaps even uh, a human in its late 60s, 70s that has... Fought the brave fight and thought he could handle the world and then he got captured. Something like that. Um, we're also going to have uh, in this area... Uh, so no lights, but they're going to have something... Um, mm, yeah, we could have some crates. Some giant crates. Now these giant crates are fun because you can use them as building blocks as well. So like this. Oh, stay here. Right, something like this. Yeah, some building blocks in the corner. That's great. Um, and people can, uh, the players can use these as well. All right, a grandfather clock. I don't think they would have a grandfather clock. Um, they might have some hay bales. Nah, slot don't use hay bales. Um... They will have some sort of a treasure hoard. I think that that's uh, something nice. All right, the magician, magician will have its quarters here, and he will have a scrying orb. He will know what's going in or out of this chamber. Uh, so that's going to be nice. Uh, let's get the grid back on center only for a, for a second. All right, he will have a scrying orb. Let's uh, let's start here. So the green slide is the boss. And he is uh, probably very well learned because he, he's a wizard. So we'll have a stack of books. Um, now we'll 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 use we'll use it sparingly. We'll just have a, a bookcase, just a bookcase here, with books and scrolls. Um, people can ask something about that if they see it. 
will not have too much detail. Um, a bed, of course. Slad will use a bed. A very big one. Uh, let's see. Can we... Can we fit this on the center square? I think we can. Yep, that's great. Alright, a bed. One of the only slots to use a bed. It's a big one, actually. Big bed. Just like this one. Yeah, nice. Great. Um, this one's uh, <laughs> very big and very basic as well. Uh, let's see, a bed cot. You can have cots. That's nice as well. Perhaps some cots for the other... Uh, yeah, we, we thought in this area there might be some sleeping spots for the uh, for the regulars. So this will take in four squares. This will two. Yeah, that's fine. Let's lock these in. Uh, two cots over here. Um, you can have a cot here. So people need to be able to tell how many uh, how many slard are living here because they can use that tactically to their advantage. What about a giblet? That's very... That's an interesting idea. Yeah, because they will probably hold someone. Um, yeah, they will probably hold someone... Uh, someone... Uh, what's, it, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> hostage. They will hold someone hostage. Yeah, so we either need a cage or a giblet. Yeah, let's, let's see. Cage... I think this is very nice because it's a very crude cage and it can fit someone. We'll uh, we'll put this in the in the bad guys quarters and we'll have someone be in here. Yeah. I think that's fine. I think that's nice. Um so it's crying orb. There we go. It's got some books. It's got a bed. This this guy is living it up. So this red slard uh, is going to need a cot. <laughs> Cuz this guy sucks. We'll have a cot. Um, you know what? It, it can be his personal uh, personal boot shiner or something. I think that's fine. A cot here. Right, so these two have no beds. Uh, these two have beds. These two have beds. These two can sleep uh, in this room as well. Have some cots available. Alright, cool. Now, uh... I really like the idea of a giblet um, instead of a cage, but I think this cage is nice because it looks crude and these are monsters. Let's see. So this is a filled one. It has uh, it has the um, what's it called underneath it? Crane. Hmm. Also one with a skelly in it. Nice. Uh, I really don't have that many interesting items. It's just it's just good enough, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, let's um let's just leave it with the cage. It will have a cage and there will be someone in this cage. And that's something I'm going to have to do off screen. I'm going to have to do some off screen thinking. And we'll have uh, someone trying to impersonate someone else. Uh, which is the slot then. And the slot will... Uh, uh, if, the, if the players buy it. If the players um, actually think that something is going on. They will of course investigate... Uh, but if they don't, they will just take this guy home and uh, there will be a brawl in Edgeville, in, in the city, and that's going to be very interesting. So, uh, we had this dead end, and we had some plans for the uh, for this dead end. So, we'll do... Uh, we'll, we'll just put something here, so it looks like something is here. We'll have some barrels. And these barrels... Uh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, put them right next to each other. So people will just think, oh, this is a barrel storage, whatever. But this holds a secret, something we're also not going to divulge in on the stream. All right, so this is now, I think, a pretty fleshed out dungeon. Now, there are some things that I would really like to do uh, in this room, because this is going to be the giant battle room. And this room needs to have a purpose, as do all rooms. 
So, if we go to buildings and go to clutter, what is the purpose of this room? <coughs> I think it would be very nice if there are some magical items here. And perhaps uh, just some candle... Uh, candelabras, is that is that the word? Apparently it is. So, uh, center. Alright, put these in the middle. So what if there are a couple of candela candelabras? Wow, whatever. Just to make it look like a bit of a, a cult thing, you know? it's uh, There is a summoning uh, happening or something. Alright. So something of a, a summoning circle and we'll just have a brazier in the middle. I think that's nice. So what if, yeah, something like this. We'll have it be, uh, there has to be some sort of a timer. Something has to happen. There is a ritual going and something needs to happen or otherwise people are going to have a bit of trouble. Yeah, I think that's neat. We'll just put these at the back of the chamber. So it's not easy to get to for the players because the players will spawn somewhere here if they solve a riddle. All right, now what is what is the summoning? Is there a summoning or is it just a spell being cast or is it a divination process? I don't know yet, but something has to happen and there has to be a timer. All right, I think this for now will do. Yeah, I think for now this is fine. This is nice. This is good enough. I'm going to save this. Uh, nether Rotten Veil over right alright now if we go to our standard Edenia Legends table alright so this is the table that we uh, load up and uh, we'll have all the players join in and whatnot, and it's going to be fine and it's going to be great now then we load in the other game the Slard Dungeon as an additive load and this will be on the table without the rest of the table being gone. Uh, we do need to fix some things though. I just noticed. Nether, uh, Rottenville, Swamps, Load, Slard Dungeon. There we go. First off, I'm going to need some scripting. And I wrote it down right here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this table non-interactable. And that means, uh, look, if you press Alt here, you will see the entire... The entire dungeon and all of its secrets but that we won't we we don't want that we don't want people to see the secrets so we want this uh to be right click scripting script editor plop there we go put the script in we also want some fog of war so from here to here and we'll fix it right up uh, we'll make it nice and straight doing this position zero uh, that's fine. Zero. This is fine. 88 and 52. 88, 52 are the magical numbers for making the entire area coated in darkness. Now, if we switch to another color, let's say I'm a white player. I do not see anything. And that's great. That's exactly what we need. Save and load. Nether, Rotten Veil. Overwrite. Yes. Go back, go back, Edenia Legends, load. <sighs> Alright, so now if we additively load this dungeon, it's going to be completely dark for, uh, for example, the white player. And now if I want to, as the dungeon master, I could grab this pawn and I could just place it here. And I can start erasing what I want them to see. So this is what I want them to see. And then I dequip this again. And this is what the white player then sees. So that's great. The white player then sees this area. We do need the grid visible for this. Otherwise it's going to be, um, it's going to be a bit hard to see. There we go. Uh, opacity. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, so this is a lot better. They will have a grid. All right, so this is what they will see, and then I will say, well, uh, if you look down this corridor, you will be able to see, and then uh, I 
need to go back to Game Master and then I say you will be able to see this. If you look down the corridor, you will see that there's an open room with two more cots and then how far is your dark vision? 60 feet? Alright, you don't see the rest. And that's going to be uh, the way I play this game. So this is then what the white player who just wandered into this corridor will see. So that's great. Uh, after fighting the slads, of course, which are probably going to rip them apart. So that's great. <laughs> Alright, so uh, that's it for basic, uh, basic dungeon building. Now, a dungeon, one level of a dungeon, will keep your players busy for quite a while. Uh, you could, of course, use ladders and have multiple dungeon levels. I just cheesed it uh, a bit. I just had the, uh, the standard five-room model. Uh, standard five-room model is uh, one room will have uh, uh, a guardian. One room will have some sort of a riddle or a puzzle. Uh, one room will have a plot twist. And there will be a room full of treasure. Um, and there's also a spare room which you can use to either have some history, some lore, perhaps um, perhaps some, um, some books to read or, or something about the area. Something with um, research value. So that's the five room model. I quite like it. But of course you can have as many rooms as you like and you can have uh, entire rooms just built for uh, killing the players. Now there's also a couple of things that I didn't really touch on in this uh, in this live stream. I really didn't touch on using traps. Uh, I enjoy using traps but I don't really like damage traps uh, because if you just have a trap with a scythe and it will just whoosh, cut someone's head off and that's it. That's no fun. Uh, you should have traps that will really get the ball rolling. Uh, for instance, if you have a trap that will separate players from one another. So, for instance, right here in the corridor, uh, one of the players is walking this way and steps on an invisible pressure plate. Now, right behind him shuts close a, uh, a grate. <laughs> And uh, a metal grate and it uh, just falls down from the ceiling and splits this party member up from the rest which is walking behind him. Now the interesting thing is there's going to be a couple of monsters hearing that and they will run down the corridor to fight this one guy. And the other guys will have to find the, the release for this grate that just fall, uh, fell down. And that, now that's a trap that really puts put some pressure on the uh, on the players. Same with pit traps. I love a pit trap because uh, someone falls down a pit trap and it deals, whatever, three points of damage, which is nothing to write home about. But he is now down in a pit. And in the pit are a couple of wolves. Now this guy is going to have to fight the wolves alone. Or he's going to have to escape. And stuff like that, you know, it, it's uh, separate your players. It gives them the real red alert. Uh, it will it will tell them that something is wrong and they need to fix it. If you just have a, a pressure plate and you step on it and uh, some fire spouts out of the ground and you take four damage and that's it, then I think you have failed in designing a trap because nothing really happened because they will just drink a potion and uh, the trap will have never existed. Or they will take a short rest and uh, heal heal up. So yeah, it's. Um, that's my vision on traps. But uh, because I know players can watch this, I am going to cut the stream right there. Let's uh, do take a bit of a look at this one last piece of software that I use, which is Worldographer. Isn't it pretty? All right, let's take a look at the world map. Uh, world map is not very detailed just yet. I am uh, I am working on it. So we have uh, Edgeville. Uh, oh, the Slard Dungeon is very much visible. We need to uh, fix that. Slard Dungeon, we don't want you to be visible in the world, just in the continents in the kingdom. Thank you. Alright, so uh, a couple of areas with lots of hills. Um, and a mountain or two. Now there is also, uh, right here in Edgeville, there is also the city of Edgeville, uh, which is not visible on the map. 
when it's zoomed out, but it is when it's zoomed in. So this is Edgeville, it lies right on top of a mountain, it has a couple of mountains uh, surrounding it as well. It's a very well defendable place, and uh, there are just a couple of routes, there are a couple of things, there are a couple of spoilers, uh, there are a couple of dungeons. <laughs> so yeah, uh, all manner of stuff. I think I saved this already. Changes you made have not been saved. Oh yes, of course, I, uh, I uh, cancel. I fixed the uh, visibility of the Slard dungeon in the world map. So every single one of these hexes is uh, six miles, and if you zoom in even further to the kingdom map, then every single one of these hexes is one mile. And that's really nice as well. Um, and then you can also do settlements and battle mats. You can do them all in this game. But I don't really like uh, using this for battle mats. I just use the... Um <laughs> Excuse me, I just use Tabletop Simulator, I think it's very nice. Alright, so uh, Dungeon Painter Pro, thank you for your service, you are done, thank you so much. Alright, let's go back to the browser. So, slards, we're going to finally use some slards, I'm really looking forward to them. They are very, um, very nasty, they do a lot of damage, they have a lot of uh, interesting, um, a lot of interesting uh, abilities. Uh, like uh, being able to plant a tadpole into you and they will just explode as soon as they uh, come out of you. That's very evil. That's very nice. I love it. People are really going to hate the blue slards. And if, if the people hate the monsters that you put in front of them, then you've done your job correct. <laughs> so that's it for making a, uh, making a dungeon uh, in, well, almost within an hour. I'm just going to have to do some tweaking, put some, put some treasure down, uh, invent some reasons. Uh, sounds like aliens. Yeah, yeah, they're very, very nasty. It's uh, it's like you, when you walk down one of those corridors and you see the walls dripping with this slime from the egg chambers, and uh, and you have that conversation in Aliens where the, uh, this looks to be segregated from something. Yeah, but segregated from what? You know that that conversation is a slimy, sticky goo on the walls. Uh, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be. Uh, I'm going to love it. And the players probably will as well. Uh, anyway, um, so here's uh, here's how to make a dungeon in uh, in just under an hour. You have to do a little bit of homework to get some of the things right, and there's no cheesing it. So uh, you need you need to um, like the chest busters, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh. Uh. But uh, yeah, you're going to have to do some homework when designing a dungeon. There's going to have to be a reason for the people to go to go there. So have to be, there has to be a reason why nobody else went there before you. That's also a very good one. And there also, uh, I love a good twist or two or a trap. Uh, so we're going to... We're going to see how that goes. I'm just going to write that down afterwards because I will not spoil my players too much. They already know they're fighting slots, so they're already probably metagaming and looking up ways to circumvent their resistances and whatnot, and that's all fine. That's all fine if they want to do that. But um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I do want to do some more D&D-related content, and I might, might use the YouTubes for that. We also might do the streams. I think... I think this is very nice. You can give tips and tricks uh, as well in chat, so that's, uh, that's that makes it a very personal thing. Um, but yeah, um, I would really like to see some YouTube content as well. Just small condensed chunks of uh, tips and tricks and information and uh, and advice on making dungeons, on making plots, uh, on making. Uh, <sighs> <sighs> Excuse me, on making big bad evil guys and stuff like that. But uh, for now, thank you, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And um, yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's better. All right. So um, if you're not very familiar with my channel, I do a lot of games uh, on my channel, but I also really like to play D and D. Um, D and D is one of my. Uh, I discovered D and D a couple of years ago, and it's been my number one hobby since um i like i like video games don't get me wrong but D, &D is it's just a whole other level um so if you uh, if you would like to see me play some games or whatnot you can press the follow button and uh, you will get notified of when i'm live usually on fridays and sundays um but i'm 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 debating on whether i should stream a bit more 
because, well, who doesn't like to stream more, right? Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and see you all again next time. Have a great day.